Hi there, my name is Etra with Mind Studios, and this is part 9 of our tutorial series all about making your own game in Universal Fighting Engine. If you haven't seen the overview video in the top right, I highly recommend you watch that to learn about how to follow along with this series. Today, we're going to set up online play for our game. I'll show you how to set up UFE's standard and rollback netcode using Photon 2. Network support and rollback netcode are features in the standard and pro editions of Universal Fighting Engine in every tier higher as well. To start, we need to import a package that will allow Unity to communicate with other computers. For Universal Fighting Engine, we use the Photon Unity Package 2. Our first step will be downloading the package, then we'll set up your own Photon Cloud app, then we'll link that Photon Cloud app to UFE. Like any package, what we need to do first is go to the Assets Store, add PUN2 free to your assets, go to Window, Package Manager, My Assets, and import PUN2. While that's importing, we can head on over to photonengine.com slash en dash us slash photon and go to sign in. To make an account, click this button here, enter your email, and you'll be sent an email about how to complete your account by adding a password. Once you have your email and password, just sign in and go to the dashboard. When you're at the dashboard, you'll see that there are no current apps created. So we'll create a cloud app for our fighting game matches. We'll click here, and then for Photon Type, we want to select Photon Unity Networking. We want to give this cloud app a name. I'll just call it Dev Brawl Test. And you can give it a description if you want, or you can just go over and click Create. The only thing we need to get from here is this app ID that pops up. So click this, right click to copy, and you'll be good to go for this step. Now we'll want to go back to Unity, and as you can see the PUN wizard is automatically popped open. However, if it doesn't automatically open up for you, you can go to Window, Photon Unity Networking, and then PUN wizard. And then right here, we're going to want to click Setup Project. From here, we want to paste that app ID we got right here and click Setup Project. After that, it will highlight the Photon Server Settings file for you, and here's where you can make edits like changing what regions your game is allowed to connect to. By default, leaving Dev Region blank will allow your game to connect through any Photon server regardless of region. Now Photon is connected to Unity. Next, we just have to connect UFE to Photon. To do that, go to Assets, UFE, Engine, Third-Party Support, and look for the package that's called Photon2 API Connector. Double-click that, and click Import. Now your Photon Cloud app should be completely connected with your UFE project. Now we need to go to the heart and soul of our project, the global settings, to set a few more options. First, scroll down to GUI options and make sure that all of the networking GUIs are properly attached. I mentioned this in a previous video, but sometimes when you upgrade your UFE package, like from standard to pro, where one has networking and the other doesn't have networking, then sometimes the correct GUI screens don't get properly transferred over. To fix that, all we need to do is click one of these here to open up the UI prefabs folder, and then drag in the appropriate prefabs into the correct slots. Once that's all good, we can scroll down to Network Options here, and then select Network Service as Photon. We'll detail all these other settings in a bit, but the only thing we'll need to pay attention to for delay-based networking is this setting right here, Package Options. By default, these packages are set up to transmit the inputs of a 12-button fighter every frame. However, if your game uses 4 buttons or 16 buttons, you can adjust your message size accordingly. For more details on this feature and more, remember you can click the question mark next to a certain section to open up documentation about anything in UFE. Now we have everything set up correctly for our online service. However, we need to test our game, and to test our game online, we're going to need two instances of our game. We, of course, have one version we can use in the editor, but we'll need to build a second version to set up our game for testing. We can do that, but by default, the build will take up our entire screen. 
So to make a build we can test with, we can go to Edit, Project Settings, go down to Player here, go to Resolution, and then instead of Full Screen Window, we'll go to Windowed, and then there should be a, yeah, right here, Check to make sure it's a resizable window. With that done, we can go to File, Build Settings, and actually build our project. We click Build, and it will ask us what folder we want to make our build in. Usually I recommend making a new folder for builds of any Unity game. Click Select Folder, and it should start building. After a minute or so, it will make the initial build of our game. In the future, when we click Build and Run, it should only take a few seconds to start our game. Once both versions of the game are loaded up, I'll go to Online and try to find a random match. We can also set up a room match where one hosts the game and the other joins the game. But since these are the only two instances of this game that exist, I'm just going to quickly connect with a random match. We should get a connection, and since we are connected to the same Photon server in the same region, there will be a slight but not too noticeable input delay. The extra input delay is inevitable because of the way standard delay-based network code works. In UFE's standard delay-based networking, if one player inputs a button, like let's say button 2 or heavy punch, one instance of the game will receive the input, then that input will be transmitted through a Photon server to the other instance of the game. This process could take, let's say, 50 milliseconds or 3 frames. Once both instances of the game have received that input, it will execute on both screens at the same time. This allows us to connect online with other players, but it does lead to a noticeable change with inputs taking longer to execute on screen. Sometimes this delay is very noticeable, especially if players are in different regions. For example, here is me running a similar WebGL game build, but through an Australian VPN. On distant or slow connections, this delay can fill a match with so many pauses that the game becomes a slog to play. However, Universal Fighting Engine has a different networking approach you can use to mostly eliminate this pausing and waiting element. Rollback networking. Rollback networking doesn't wait until both instances of the game receive an input to do anything. Instead, it goes through a constant process of receiving inputs to fix discrepancies. First, let's say it takes 100 milliseconds or 6 frames for an input to be received by another instance of our game. In rollback networking, when I press button 2, my character will immediately start throwing the heavy punch. At the same time, a package will be sent with the button data and a timestamp which says when the punch was thrown. As 100 milliseconds passes, the left screen will keep advancing with the heavy punch animation. When the right instance of the game receives this information, it will say, okay, this input to do a heavy punch was sent 6 frames ago. So it will automatically jump player 1 to the 6th frame of the heavy punch animation. This way, the delay is covered up and there is no waiting for both players to receive an input before it is performed. In some cases with high lag and slow internet, this approach can lead to a player walking forward further than they are supposed to, before they are rolled back to the proper game state, where in this instance, they ended up jumping. However, in practice, these animation cuts and position corrections are often not noticeable, especially if you use frame delay, an input buffer, and animation blending as we'll talk about in a bit here. If you want more resources talking about rollback networking, Core A Gaming and Code Mystics have great videos I'll link in the top right that break down the concept a bit more. But just to quickly show you the power of rollback netcode, here are four instances of the game. Both sets of matches are running with an Australian VPN in the middle again. The top one here is our delay-based netcode example from earlier. And here is the same scenario, but with the game using rollback netcode. The difference is staggering. So setting up rollback netcode for your game is one of our highest recommendations if you want your game to be set up for online play. To set up rollback netcode for the dev brawl here, we need to go through a few extra steps. In order for rollback to function, the computer needs to know what frames of an animation to jump to for a rollback. 
For example, in the heavy punch scenario, the computer needs to immediately know the exact state of frame 6 of the heavy punch. For the computer to save each animation frame by frame, we have to utilize something called an animation map. To record an animation map for a character, we'll need to open up a scene called the map recorder. I'll just search that here and open it up. For an example of how to make an animation map, I'll click the animation recorder and drag in this character, Robot Kyle. What I have to do now is run the animation map scene. In here, if I click record all basic moves, and then record all special moves, the map recorder will map and save every frame of animation on Robot Kyle to use for rollback calculations. Once these are recorded, they are automatically saved and I can stop the scene. Now all I have to do for Robot Kyle is open up his character file, go down to move sets, and then check right here, use animation maps, so he actually uses these new animation maps we saved. Now Robot Kyle is all set up to work with Rollback Netcode. I'll also repeat this process with my Jeff character. However, you'll notice when I load Jeff in, he doesn't have the correct rotation. This is because his character had a custom rotation when setting him up initially. If this is a problem for you, simply click on the character clone in the hierarchy here, set your character to the correct rotation, and then run the recorder. Otherwise, your character is going to have all its animations, but rotated in a completely different direction, and we don't want that. I'll record the basic moves, I'll record the special moves, and then finally, I'll go to moves and make sure Jeff has their newly recorded animation maps ticked. After this, I'll go back to our Demo Fighter 2D scene. Now that we have our character set up for rollback, we need to go back to our network settings in the heart and soul of our project, the global settings. I'll bring that over here. And just down here, we've got to check the enable rollback checkbox. And frankly, with just that setting, you should be good, and your game and characters should support a smooth rollback experience. By default, the standard rollback settings should be good for your game, but I figured I'd go over what some more advanced rollback settings do to end this tutorial off. This first section has to do with animations and rollback. This first box, Force UFE Animation Control, makes sure that UFE is in control of animations online, even if they are controlled by outside Unity controllers on the offline version of the game. Root motion, blending, and rotation are all settings that help mask when a rollback occurs in UFE. See, back when I was explaining rollback, I actually deceived you with the power of video editing. I said that if the right instance of the game here detects if player 1 is 6 frames into a punch, it will teleport to frame 6 of that punch. What actually happens by default in UFE is a bit more smooth. Instead of just teleporting, the 3D models will quickly blend into the proper position instead of just snapping their arm to the right position. These three checkboxes are if you want to turn this rollback animation smoothing feature off. We already went through package options, so next is rollback options. Max fast forwards per frame adjusts how many frames your game can recover from in rollback. Input buffer size adjusts how large the saved input buffer is for player moves in rollback. Spawn buffer size adjusts how many game objects like effects and projectiles can be created and stored on a player's game instance before they are garbage collected. Rollback balancing here is one of the most interesting settings because there are three forms of rollback balancing you can choose from. Disabling rollback balancing means only one player will feel the impact of rollback. The match creating player should see the game as perfectly smooth, while the opponent will suffer from all the rollback cuts. Conservative balancing will have one player feel the effects of rollback more than another when a rollback needs to occur, but the default setting Aggressive balancing tries to balance out the impact of rollback equally across players. This is the setting we generally recommend. Finally, down here we have frame delay. But Etra, I thought you said there were no delays in rollback netcode. Yes, I did, but that was another deception to make the rollback explanation a bit simpler to understand. By default, there is an input delay of 3 additional frames when playing online for any mode. 
This is used as a buffer to avoid having to roll back or freeze at every single minute lag spike. You can remove this frame delay, however, decreasing this buffer will make your game more susceptible to freezing or having more dramatic rollbacks, and increasing it will give you a larger safety net at the cost of higher input delay. For a 60 FPS game, we recommend having a 3 to 4 frame input delay for online play. There's also an auto feature which adjusts how long the delay is based off of internet connection quality. However, we all know fighting game players like consistency, so you probably just want to keep this value fixed. And speaking about consistency, you can check this box right here to apply this additional input delay offline as well as online so players can be used to it when they hop onto online play. Since I want my final game to be mostly focused on online play, I'll check this box to apply the frame delay at all times. We have one more section here which is called synchronization testing. This area is where you can set up a tool that can help you figure out why online matches may be desyncing. We'll have a whole video on that section here, but if you don't need the desync tools, well then you can hop on over to the final video in this series about building and launching your final game. I'll see you there. Bye.